Kia ora. My name's Robbie and I'm another white man behind a desk. And today, I'm talking to you about why you got a random message on Facebook from that girl you vaguely remember from high school. That's right, we're finally talking about MLM's multi-level marketing schemes. They're bad. So, first things first. What are we dealing with here? Well, the first thing your friend will probably tell you about their MLM is that an MLM is an opportunity to become an independent business owner, or IBO or IPO, by giving you access to products that you can sell to your friends and family, making a little commission on every sale, and saving the company's head office millions in advertising. But, as with every good sounding thing, there's a catch. MLM recruits also have to pay an upfront fee to get registered. And then they have to pay recurring monthly fees or minimum monthly orders to stay registered. There's usually also a bunch of seminars and conferences you'll want to pay for too if you're really serious about making money and they can get expensive quick. But don't worry. If you're not quite selling enough fizzy drinks or scented oils to cover your costs, the MLM has you covered. All you have to do is find some people who aren't Ibos yet and get them to sign up and that way you'll get a cut of all the fees that they pay and you'll be able to stop selling altogether. And if those people can sign up their own Ibos beneath them, well even better, soon enough you'll be making money in your sleep and retiring at 30 and oh my god, it's a pyramid scheme. Oh fuck, I'm in a pyramid scheme. That's right, while MLMs might sound like a promising little side hustle to make a few extra bucks, there's one crucial fact that you should know before you sign up. According to one American study, over 99% of people who join MLMs lose more money than they make. Now, as far as percentages go, it doesn't get much closer to 100% than over 99%. So what's going on here? Why are MLMs so ridiculously bad at making the vast majority of their members money? The answer's pretty simple. You see, MLMs are pyramid-shaped. And the problem with pyramid-shaped schemes is that, thanks to geometry, there will always be more people putting money in than getting money out. Always. That's why pyramid schemes are illegal, basically everywhere in the world. The vast majority of people who get involved with them get massively ripped off. And sure, you might say, but that's only the recruitment part, Robbie. Didn't you say that MLMs also sell products? And to that I'd say, well, that's, that's true. I, I did say that. You're a great listener. However, if you're hoping to make money off an MLM product, I have some terrible news for you. It turns out that there's this thing called the internet, and everything's already on the internet for cheap. Which is why MLMs themselves will tell you that the only real way to earn cash is by recruiting new members. One of the schemes in New Zealand, fragrance company Scentsy, lists 10 ways in its compensation plan that recruits can make money, and only one of them is commissioned from selling our product. The other nine all involve signing up more members and earning rewards for growing your downline. And that's unusual. If I started a business selling coffee, it would be weird if 90% of the reasons I made money were unrelated to selling coffee and were more related to convincing other people that selling coffee is a great idea and I'd love it if you started a rival business. Each member needs to recruit multiple new members beneath them to recoup their costs, which means that MLMs can burn through communities quickly, leaving more people than not on the hook for hundreds or thousands of dollars. Or, in the case of the Legacy Collective, an MLM in Northland that sells scientifically disproven water machines for six grand a pop, you might be left on the hook for tens of thousands of dollars. They're also extremely unsustainable. If an MLM gets members to each recruit, for example, five new members beneath them, then after only 14 layers, the pyramid has to stop because you run out of human beings currently alive on the planet Earth. That's just maths. But obviously, it's unlikely you'll hear any of this in an MLM pitch. They're more likely to focus on vague, positive sounding catchphrases like becoming your own boss and escaping the nine to five and building your future. And for that reason, they often thrive in university settings where young people are ready to get into huge amounts of debt and don't know what to do with the rest of their lives, which is, incidentally, the same reason they were tricked into going into university in the first place. 
And MLM called Vema took off in Dunedin in 2014 and had Otago Uni students recruiting each other to sell an energy drink called Verve. Student magazine Critic uh, reported that Vema affiliates were coughing up $211 a month just to qualify for compensation benefits, and some were also paying an extra $800 to qualify for a premier bonus, which, according to some secret maths that only Vema knew, made you more money somehow. And while Vema convincingly denied being a pyramid scheme by saying, pyramid schemes don't have offices. We have a head office and lots of offices. They were shut down the following year by the American Federal, Federal Trade Commission for, and let's just see where this is going. Oh, it says here, being a pyramid scheme. MLMs turn out to be pyramid schemes so often that some of them don't even like to call themselves MLMs anymore, opting instead for network or affiliate marketing schemes, or in the case of one MLM operating in Wellington, a simple mentorship opportunity. Now, I'm not able to name this scheme because the person who runs it and his friendly wife have lawyers on speed dial, but let's just say that if anyone's ever asked you if you'd like to meet their mentor or talked about developing leadership skills and retiring early by achieving financial freedom or anything mysterious and generic like that, then you get the hell out of there, okay? You run from that person and you don't ever look back. Now, if you're thinking of signing up to this mentorship, which it goes without saying is not free, uh, I can save you some time and money. The secret business schools they want you to pay for are all about, surprise, surprise, how to recruit more people into the scheme. And you'd have to say, if the only thing legally separating an MLM from a pyramid scheme is selling products or services, and the service your MLM offers is training people to expand the MLM, then your lawyers must either be geniuses or idiots, which is probably why this particular scheme keeps a low profile and keeps everything as vague as possible until new recruits are in too deep. But you DM me on Twitter and I'll, I'll let you know what's going on. At this point, avoiding MLMs might seem like a no-brainer. We've all heard the true crime pro podcasts or seen the John Oliver monologue, so why do they keep sticking around? Well, first of all, Times are hard and people are desperate. Between the cost of living, house prices, and wage gaps along gender and ethnic lines, uh, something that pitches itself as an easy way to make a few extra bucks and get ahead in an unfair system doesn't seem like such a crazy idea, especially if it's being sold to you by a friend or a relative or someone from your church, which brings us to the second reason MLMs do so well. MLMs take advantage of people's personal relationships and trust within their community. One MLM, the Forex Tips and Tricks company, IM Academy, arrived in New Zealand last year and has been specifically targeting single mothers and the Māori and Pacifica community. The person who brought it over from America even explained in an interview with RNZ that she recruits from those communities because a lot of them have financial hardship and when they see people like me who look like them, it's trusted and they feel like if she can do it, then I know I can do it also. Add social media and FOMO into the mix, and soon enough, it can seem like everyone you know is thriving in an MLM and you're missing out, when in reality, they're almost certainly struggling to keep their heads above water. Fun fact about IM Academy, one of the main guys there was also one of the main guys at Vema, who, who jumped ship when it was shut down for being a pyramid scheme. And I'm sure his, his new venture is, is totally legit. Because of the atmosphere of relentless positivity, people in MLMs are encouraged to cut out haters and naysayers from their lives. Uh, this can lead them to isolate themselves from friends and family who don't have the right mindset, devote more of their lives to their MLM community, and slowly lose touch with the real world. One member of Essential Oil MLM doTERRA, I think I'm saying that right, who sunk so much money into the scheme that she qualified as a platinum wellness expert, also co-founded the anti-vax group Voices for Freedom. So it's, it's good to know that people sometimes use their MLM recruiting skills for good. And then there's the main reasons, uh, reason that MLMs won't go away. They don't have to, because even though they're direct descendants of pyramid schemes and have all the same problems, for some reason they're not illegal, as long as they involve commercially viable products which present genuine income earning opportunities through sales to clients, then they're legally in the clear. Thanks to this loophole, uh, MLMs will often frame recruitment as an optional bonus income stream, uh, despite the fact that in practice it makes up the bulk of members' incomes, if they're making 
any income at all, which as a reminder, most of them aren't. However, MLMs can still fall foul of the law if they make misleading claims about their products or the earning potential of joining as a member. And if their products are found to be gimmicks that have little to no actual value, for example, Forex tutorials that are worse than what you could get on YouTube for free or mentorships full of meaningless business cliches, then they could legally be found to be a pyramid scheme and thus liable for a $600,000 fine. Unfortunately, the Commerce Commission doesn't proactively investigate MLMs for being pyramid schemes, which means that most of the time people are left to do their own due diligence. And unsurprisingly, most of us don't know what red flags to look out for. So, here I am, ready to arm you, and if you only share one bit of this monologue with your friends, this is the bit to share. Here is a quick list of some red flags to look out for to make sure you're not joining an MLM. First, if the exclusive business opportunity you've been invited to join has any kind of joining fee or monthly fee or compulsory purchases, that is a red flag. If you hear phrases like, be your own boss, and this is not a get rich quick scheme, and I promise this is legal, Red flag! If you get told the business or mentorship or opportunity can make you rich, but it's kind of unclear exactly how you're supposed to make money, red flag! And most importantly, if anyone ever, ever mentions the book Rich Dad Poor Dad around you, then this is a huge red flag. Even if it's not an MLM, just stay away. You don't want to be around that person. That's just, that's just good life advice in general. There isn't a secret way to hack life and get rich in your sleep. The only way to actually make money for doing nothing is to be a boomer and buy a house 30 years ago. So don't join that MLM. And if you're in one, get out now. You will not make your money back. Cut your losses and try something else. And if that advice is too late for someone you love, then look up some articles about how to get them out and be nice to them as they come back to reality. Most importantly, if you become aware of an MLM that's breaking the law or might actually be a literal pyramid scheme with a dummy product, then put together some evidence and go on over to the Commerce Commission website to make a complaint. Anyone can knock on an MLM if they believe they're breaking the law, and trust me, you don't want to miss out on this exclusive, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to destroy your very own business.